Hey guys, welcome back to The Tiny Herd. I was not planning on filming this video for this week, but when you have pets, things come up and things happen. So I thought I would start tonight filming a vlog for you guys and kind of take you along the process. Mikey currently will not eat. Um, so Andy just ran in here to see what was going on. So I'll give you guys a little bit of background here really quick and then show you Mikey and what I've been doing. So basically when I came home from work today, my boyfriend told me that he wouldn't eat his treat at lunchtime and then he wouldn't eat dinner. So he didn't eat any veggies today. So he really didn't eat since we don't really know when. I know he ate his pellets this morning because they both ran out to get them. They ran out to me. They ran in here. They ate their pellets. So he definitely ate pellets this morning. So he maybe didn't eat for like 10-ish hours. So um, when I got home, we immediately went into like keeping his gut moving kind of mode. So I'm thinking he has GI stasis, but I think we caught it pretty early. So I did call the vet. We have an appointment tomorrow morning, but let me walk you guys through what I've been doing so far tonight to kind of make him feel better. All right. So yes, it is a little bit of a mess. All right. That's just what happens. I cleaned the litter box and stuff, but I didn't want to bother him too much. Andy, you're kind of in the way, buddy. Can you move please? Okay, so Mikey basically at this point is just kind of like pressing his belly on the floor and being acting like he's uncomfortable, if that makes sense. He actually looks, in the footage you guys are seeing right now, he looks pretty good. He's, he's feeling a little bit better. So what I did was I immediately gave him some Appetite Restore from Sherwood. I tried to get him to eat and he wouldn't eat, so we went ahead and syringe fed him some recovery food. And then I gave him a bunch of water via syringe as well to just keep his gut moving and try to get him feeling better. Um, I gave him a little bit of infant gas drops as well because he did feel like his stomach was a little bit bloated or kind of like puffed out a little bit. It wasn't like really hard or anything, but it definitely was bigger than it normally was. We gave him the gas drops. We gave him another dose an hour later, and then we gave him another dose one hour after that. So he had three doses in three hours, and then we will be giving him a dose every three to five hours through the night um, if he doesn't seem any better. And then we will be syringe feeding him every three to four hours as well to keep him moving. So that is what we've done so far. I did also give him a dose of Medicam because I just had it left over. So I did give him some of that to just kind of ease his discomfort and make him feel a little bit better in hopes that he would start eating and go to the bathroom. That's another thing I forgot to mention. He hadn't gone to the bathroom that I'd seen. I did see him um, pee, but I didn't see him poop at any point. So we cleaned the litter box so that we would have a better idea of what he was doing and then trying to keep him hydrated and hopefully he will poop for us. But we are going to the vet, so we're doing everything we can at this point. But you guys are seeing him right now. He's been grooming and his stomach does look a lot better. So I think the gas drops have been helping and he is feeling a little bit better because he is interacting a little bit more now as well. Where before he was kind of just, you know, laying around and wasn't very happy. All right, guys, sorry for the bad lighting. I'm going to try to do this at an angle. So first off, ignore this syringe here. We don't actually needle syringe anything. It's just to get it out of the bottle. I'll talk about that in a health check video later. That is just a preventative thing. So don't mind that. That has nothing to do with Mikey right now. But what I have here is I've been giving him the Sherwood rabbit recovery food to get him to eat. We have the Little Remedies infant gas relief drops. And then I just have a variety of syringes here. Um, I've been syringing him water. I've been syringing him the Appetite Restore. And then this is his mix-up of critical care. I've just been keeping it and keeping it um, like covered and adding water to it as I need so that we can continue to feed him that. So that is what we're doing at this point. Like I said, we are going to the vet, but this is what it needs to be done to make sure his gut keeps moving through the night. All right, so in summary, like I said, he is being syringe fed every couple of hours. He has had several doses of gas drops. He has had 
Appetite Restore liquid, which is really just like electrolytes and to try to get him to eat again and make sure he stays hydrated. Syringe feeding him water and then I did give him a little bit of Medicam that I had left over from previous vet visits. So that is everything that we are doing at this point. Encouraging him to eat obviously and keeping an eye on him as well So we will be going to the vet in the morning and I will take you guys along with us when we do that and keep you updated on What is going on? So I'll see you guys tomorrow All right guys quick update actually same evening, but he's eating hay. I'm so excited He's actually eating on his own and hay is the best thing for him to be eating right now So good job mr. Andy for coming in here and bothering him so that he started to eat so that's a good sign Good sign, guys. He's eating veggies. So at this point, it's about, I think it's about 8 o'clock at night. So it's been probably like 5 or 6 hours since we realized that this was even an issue. So I am happy that he is eating. Hey guys, so it is a couple days later. I didn't end up finishing the video talking about Mikey's issues with GI stasis. So I wanted to just sit down and talk through that and give you guys some info and tips on GI stasis as well. So I said in the last clip that I had a vet appointment for him and that I was planning on taking him to the vet and we actually did not end up doing that. So I think the very last clip I showed you guys was he actually started eating hay on his own. So after he started eating hay on his own, um, he actually would drink water, he started eating some cilantro, I gave him some veggies that he would eat and I really think the gas drops helped a ton because uh, within like an hour to two hours after his third dose, his stomach was back to normal. It like really deflated. Um, he was back to going to the bathroom. He was eating. He was moving around a lot more. He wasn't doing the weird belly pressing thing that he had been doing. And he just seemed way more comfortable. So because of that, I decided that we would keep an eye on him through the night. And if he was still okay in the morning, then we would be okay to not take him to the vet. So what I did is just kept an eye on him. I kept giving him food to make sure that he was still like wanting to eat and he was. He kept eating hay all night. I checked on him a couple times even like at the last time I checked on him was like 2 a.m. So making sure he was eating, making sure he was drinking water and he was doing really well. In the morning he came out to get his pellets no problem and at that point um, I actually called the vet and I told them that he was eating. He seemed back to normal. His Belly seemed totally back to normal and they were good with me not bringing him in as well. So that turned into a good result from that whole experience. So I'm really glad that um, we caught it early and that I immediately started in on some treatment, um, preliminary treatment things so that we ended up not even having to take him to the vet because normally in that situation, you always wanna go to the vet. But like I said, I did talk to the vet and he was eating and was fine. So that's kind of like you have to make the judgment call there based on the symptoms. So I did want to just talk to you guys about GI stasis in general. What we think happened with Mikey is it, it suddenly got very hot here and really humid. Um, and I think our air conditioning wasn't quite keeping up at that point because the weekend before this happened, it had been very hot. So I think he just wasn't drinking enough water. And if they don't keep enough, if they don't stay hydrated enough, if they don't keep eating enough um, on a regular basis, because if you know anything about rabbits, they have to be constantly eating, getting that hay going through their system so that their gut and their digestive system keeps working. So if that gets too dehydrated or they're not eating enough, they can go into GI stasis, which is when it really slows down and it can cause a whole host of problems and that's why you, it's really important to take your rabbit to the vet as soon as you can if that's an issue. And it can cause, like I had in Mikey, he didn't want to eat, he was in some pain, um, he was couldn't get comfortable, he was like pressing his belly to the floor like he was uncomfortable. His belly was like kind of bigger, kind of like he had a little balloon in him. Um, so I could tell his like stomach wasn't working properly. He was grinding his teeth a little bit because it is painful and he wasn't going to the bathroom. So those are really the things to look for, especially the not eating. That's when it becomes a really, really, really big issue, not eating and not going to the bathroom. So like I said, first thing I did was give him gas drops, got him like making him eat recovery food because it's really important to keep their digestive system going 
So if you think it's GI stasis, you need to get them eating, make them eat. So in Mikey, we gave him the gas drops. We were making him eat. I was syringing him water as well. And then I did give him some pain meds, which normally that's not something you're going to have. Um, I just had that left over from previous visits with them. And I knew that it would help because generally if rabbits are in pain, they're also not going to want to eat. So we gave him the normal standard dose for a rabbit. Um, it was previously for them um, and it was just Medicam. So I knew it wasn't going to hurt him at all. But that's really all we did was just get him to eat. I really, really think the gas drops are what did it. We gave him one milliliter every hour for three hours and then I was planning on giving it to him three hours later again. And if you guys want to know the exact doses, I will leave the link below um, of where I found the information about this on how much you could give. And after the third dose, literally within like three hours, or three hours, <laughs> literally within an hour to two hours, he was like back to normal. So I think that went a long way. We also did catch it early, like I said, so I think that helped a ton as well. So those are really the things to watch out for in GI stasis. It can happen with like no warning. Um, like Mikey was eating just fine the morning of that day and by the evening he was not eating. So definitely make sure if your rabbit doesn't come to dinner, doesn't come out and eat their pellets like they normally do, keep an eye on them. If they're actually not eating or they look like they're in pain, get them to the vet as soon as possible. I would always recommend if you think a rabbit has stasis, get them to the vet as soon as possible because you don't know if they have something obstructing their digestive tract. You don't know if they have bloat. Um, it just worked out in this scenario that he was back to normal before we even got him to the vet. So even though we ended up not taking him, I still would always recommend getting them as soon as possible to the vet. If it had been, if the vet had been open within the hour that I got home, we would have gone anyways because I didn't know that he was gonna start eating. So that's definitely something I recommend. If you guys have any questions, let me know down below, but this is kind of what happened with Mikey and kind of the information about GI stasis that you need to know kind of the basics. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, it's not the video I was planning on for this week, but I thought you guys would like to see a real life pet medical situation. So, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.